Walking Dead has become a shining example of the creator-owned movement in comics. I always knew that the success of The Walking Dead was just going to keep going. You want your friends to read this, because this is one of the best things that's out there. No one could have expected that an independent comic would hit this level. People who don't like zombies are reading this book. I got hooked. Zombies are fucking awesome. It grows exponentially every year, and just gets bigger and bigger. Where does it stop? It's been a, an amazing phenomenon. It's, it's breathtaking. Original and different and complex. Everywhere you go, people know what The Walking Dead is. For it to keep going for 10 years and to reach issue 100 is amazing. I was born in Lexington, and uh, my wife still has family here, and, and I work a lot. Uh, it is kind of like a vacation for everyone but me when we come back here, so the kids are, like, playing in the pool, and my wife's, like, hanging out with her parents. I'm like, oh, I'll be in the basement working on this script, or I'll be, you know, down the street working on this script. The office that I'm working at in Kentucky right now is my old office that I used to work at before I moved to Los Angeles. I had so many books stored there, and I also used it as a warehouse for all my comps. I knew I'd be working here for a few weeks, so I uh, had an old dining room table moved into the space I used to work in so that I could use that as a desk. I've been working here at my old, uh, my old kitchen table from uh, my old house on, on Liberty Road. I had a two-room house, me and my girlfriend and the eventual wife. We had the one bedroom, and then the other bedroom I, I basically set up as a little studio. My wife hated that setup because it was like three guys 10 feet away in this room. I'm still surprised to this day that our relationship survived that uh, time period. I worked at a place called Kentucky Lighting and Supply to make ends meet. My general work day consisted of working on comics until two or three in the morning. And then I would go to bed and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning because I had to be at work at eight o'clock. I do remember sometimes when I'd be talking to him on the phone, he'd be at work, uh, one of his bosses or someone would come into the room and he'd have to pretend that he was ordering fixtures from me. Those years were, were filled with doubt every minute of every day. I didn't know if things were gonna work out or if things were gonna take off. When I met Robert, he was basically living off of credit cards. And he was just out there really pushing his books because he believed in it, believed in what he was doing. He had a, a little table and he just had a bunch of comics out there. You know, there was no printed posters or flyers. I don't even know if he had a tablecloth. Maybe he had a tablecloth. But you could tell there was something interesting and driven about this guy. It looked like I'm, I'm thinking big, but I don't have the resources to be big. A successful convention was measured by whether or not we had made back the money on the car in the hotel room just the entire trip. As I was coming up with as many concepts as I could, I thought, hey, it's a lot easier to do these comics at Image. Most of the things that Image published were creator-owned books that you know people actually came up with and did. I eventually came up with the idea of taking everything that I loved about zombie movies, the Romero movies in particular, and really kind of pour all of you know my interests in that genre. My mindset was always like, I gotta figure out a way to get people interested in this. You know, I gotta figure out a way to get people to actually support this so that I can keep telling these stories. The Walking Dead was pitched as a zombie book that was gonna have a, a science fiction twist. It was like gonna culminate in some alien invasion that may not have been 100% uh, honest with what Robert was actually shooting for. The book's given the green light. I'm reading it and we're up to like issue five or six and I was like, man, I really loved this issue, but I got a question for you. You know, you said you're gonna be dropping all these hints about the alien invasion, and I don't see any of that. And Robert says, oh, that was, that was all bullshit, man. And I was like, oh, you motherfucker. There was no indication that the book was, you know, going to be a success. It actually launched as part of Image Comics Horror Month, where they launched three or four new horror-themed comics, and Walking Dead was the least ordered among the four. It was the characters that were sort of interesting, and you don't really get to know that right away. Within about maybe two or three issues, I realized, oh, this book isn't about zombies. It's about the people in the world of zombies. Our second issue sales jumped. By issue three, I knew that there was, you know, something of a phenomenon going on. Hey, 
it was finally the zombie comic that you've, you've been waiting for. Even if you weren't waiting for a zombie comic. The fact that they were able to lock down a regular schedule on it, I think is definitely a credit to amazing artist Charlie Adlard. That man is a beast. Charlie lives in uh, Shrewsbury, which is in Shropshire, which is in England. I don't know if one of those is a city or a state or what. I don't really know how the United Kingdom works. Where I live, it is indeed England's green and pleasant land. It is just a total contrast from LA sitting in a writer's room. <laughs> When it came time to find somebody to replace Tony Moore, Charlie was the key choice. I knew that he would be able to bring like a stark, dark kind of take to the world of The Walking Dead. He is one of the fastest artists uh, working in comics today. Like, he really keeps the engines running on time. Robert usually hands in his scripts uh, a week late, <laughs> which leads Charlie to, to catch up. He's always uh, just a day or two away from not having script to work on, so I always have to be continually getting him stuff because he's very fast and it's really annoying. It's pretty fluid. Guys like Charlie, you wake up and the stuff's already there. You send him emails and by next morning it's magic fairy dust time. Over 10 years we've developed this working relationship where we respect each other's mediums. You know, he'll send me a script, I'll just start drawing it straight away. And it's the same thing with the artwork. He's drawn over 100 issues at this point. So far there hasn't been anything that Robert's thrown at him that he has shied away from, whether it's extreme violence, or big cityscapes crawling with zombies or vehicles. Charlie can do it all. I'm sure there's been quite a few where I've had, you know, whoever's driving a car sat on the British side and, uh, and then afterwards just thought, Ugh. The thing that I love about Charlie's artwork is it has always been his own work. It has been his style. His use of black is out of control. It's totally breathtaking and scary and human all at once. There's so much texture. You feel the unwashedness sometimes and the exhaustion and the, the wounds and the pain. A lot of times you know how they're feeling just by the way he's drawn them and it's, it's a great collaboration. The writing of a comic book is usually done at all hours of the day, every minute of my life. You know, a scene will pop into my head and that scene will live in my head for a long time. There's a lot of cool steps in that I'm always free to change my mind. I think that's kind of the most fun aspect of writing. Having worked together for 10 years, you, know, you also build a bit of a shorthand. And I think you know this is the breakdown of the issue. And Charlie gets it. He knows what to do and what Robert's looking for. Robert's scripts have got more and more minimal. Now, I don't need to see a lot of the stuff that he's describing because I kind of intuitively know that that's what he wants. I just feel so privileged. I'm just so lucky to be able to get up in the morning and look forward to every day of my life. Because this is just playing. I'm just drawing a comic book, kind of slightly unaware of the success. To reach issue 100 as an indie book is pretty amazing. I think it's a testament to Robert and Charlie and Image for just kind of believing in it and keeping it going and not lighting up at any point. There's no better poster child for success in creator-owned comics than Robert Kirkman. I don't mean to be looking in this direction at all times. I apologize, people. I, you are of value as well. <laughs> Just leaning towards the mic because I'm tall and I feel like if I get up here, no one will be able to hear me. I don't know. So anyway, um, it's Comic-Con. Let's have some fun. <laughs> As you know, Rick died in the last issue. So uh, we're gonna be following up that with the, is that issue not out yet? I'm sorry, what, what just happened? When we go to Comic-Con, it's like you're with Elvis. It's this weird moment where people just swarm him and take pictures and get autographs and all that. These people love this book. Robert's got the worst signature in comic books, bar none. My signature is terrible, Todd is correct. I've had people bring me things that are like signed by the entire cast because they don't think I've signed it. And I'm like, actually, this one right here is me. And they're like, oh, okay. And he waited in line for no reason. I've seen them stand there for 10 hours, making everybody walk away with a smile. If you do that, you will have almost a fan for life. Without the fan, we're nothing. A lot of people meet me and they're like, wow, I really expected like a quiet brooding type, you know? I didn't expect you to be so uh, cheerful. 
It all makes sense. Leave me alone. Can you sign my hand? He'll walk out of the building and still sign stuff as long as there are people there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The love and devotion to the book is what spawns cosplay. You know, you get people who dress up at shows and they come through dressed as their favorite character. Those are people who really relate to those characters and they, they love that stuff so much. They want to be involved in some way. Well, I've always kind of been a geek since childhood and now at a place where I get to be geek and proud, I'm going for that. From a very young age, I was always an odd child. I liked monster, zombie, gross stuff. The grosser, the better. When little girls wanted to be princesses and ballerinas, I wanted to be a medical examiner. I'm Glenn Ree. I chose him because, well, other than physical attributes, as you can see, um, he's kind of this kid trying to prove himself as a leader. And I feel like I'm that in high school. I'm kind of trying to become more mature and uh, show myself as more self-sufficient. This is a Walking Dead blank that I did, and I'm hoping to show it to Robert, get his stamp of approval, maybe get a signature, and show him what another Kentucky boy could do. I got my zombie bike tattoo last year. You can see the infection lines, and I had him throwing a few maggots for, <laughs> for good measure. <laughs> I came to San Diego Comic-Con this year with the intent of having Robert Kirkman draw on my arm. This is a zombie head. It's got an arrow through it, and he signed it, and I'm about to get it tattooed in about half an hour. So I knew that I wanted to get a Walking Dead tattoo, so I emailed Adler, and he finally got back to me. After a couple months, you know, he sent me the finished product, and it was exactly what I wanted, and I was super excited about it, and now it's on me forever. You meet those fans, like, you're just like, God damn, it, that's amazing to have, like, that level of enthusiasm and love for something, it's just so true, you know, which is awesome to see. I would hug all these people if I could. The fact that the fans have supported The Walking Dead in the way they have is something that I'll never be able to repay these people for. I got a lot of interest from people that wanted to turn it into a movie, and I never really thought that that made a lot of sense. The Walking Dead was always pitched as the zombie movie that never ends. I never thought anyone would make it into a TV show, despite the fact that that was kind of the ideal medium. Good on AMC for going, no, I think the world is yearning for a zombie show. Let's give this a shot. We saw 80 different actors before we found someone that you know was perfect, and that guy was Andrew Lincoln. I remember when I saw Andy as Rick, I was like, oh, damn, that's that's good casting. He is a leader, and he is um, someone that's genuinely decent. That's who Rick Grimes is. And then what Andy brings to it is he makes all those situations and those emotions real. When I was offered the role and I started reading, I was thrilled. And the key part that really intrigued me when I read into the comic was how he changed. He wasn't your archetypal kind of heroic character. In fact, he was quite the opposite. I thought that that would be a really thrilling opportunity to start in one place and to move so far away from this cop. That's what's so cool about Rick Grimes is he's not an action hero, he's an everyman. And I think that, you know, Andrew is able to portray that so well that, you know, he was the clear choice from the minute we saw him on tape. The concept of it on the page was so rich. It had such a fan base right from there. I think the vision that uh, Mr. Kirkman had was really maintained in terms of what was put on the screen. Everybody wants to tell a story that the fans deserve. And Greg Nicotero is, in my opinion, he's the heart of the team. And he cares like a fan. Greg is the guy that makes the show possible. After the book being written and the great scripts, it's like how we're able to, on a tight budget and an eight-day shoot, actually be able to take out and make zombies work, where there's blood and there's gore and they're scary. It's practical. The man's a wizard. We can just put a lot of black. And we should make some really thick, like, brown methicel in with the maggots and shit, so it's really I grew up in Pittsburgh. I worked for George Romero, and I knew the world. We, we always joked that it's in the water there. So my first gig was Day of the Dead. So I knew, I knew the genre. What I love about the things that we've been able to capture on the show is the humanity of it. 
One minute you're feeling something for this monster, and then the next minute this monster is trying to literally devour you alive. And I think that's something that we've been able to capture that no one else has ever captured. I'm sitting there on set knowing that this is a, an actor in makeup, and it looks so real. It is the weirdest thing. Greg's incredible. Having a comic book on TV that it's there every week for 13 weeks and then it comes back again the next year, I think that's definitely had an impact on comics. The Walking Dead through the television show has kind of grown into this massive phenomenon. It's amazing to see like these new fans who've never read the books. My own mother loves both the show and the comic. I, I grew up reading comics and I can tell you there was never any point in my childhood when my mom said, hey, I'm gonna sit down and read one of these comic books with you. So what does the 10 year anniversary mean to you? It means I'm getting old, uh, I don't know. I mean, it feels like I just started yesterday, so hopefully it'll uh, go for at least another 10 years. It's so weird seeing all these zombies are so it's great. A huge gift for about 16, 17 million of us. People my age watch it, kids watch it. I mean, my parents watch the show, grandmas watch the show. And I was talking to Kirkman about it one time and he goes, ah, it's just because it's a soap opera with some zombie shit. <laughs> the success of Walking Dead has completely remapped the world of, of comic books. For a lot of people, this is the first time they've thought about comic books in a context that doesn't involve capes and laser beams. It's a gateway into a whole other world. There's just no way that 12 million people would watch a show and then a percentage of them wouldn't start reading the comics. When I found that The Walking Dead number one was going for 35 bucks, I was like, holy shit, someone's gonna buy this for $35? I flipped it, never looked back, and now I think it goes for well over a thousand. Once you make a mark on pop culture, that's sort of the moment where you just go, wow, people now know my brand. It doesn't necessarily have to always just be the original product. If you look at all the comic book merchandise from the Walking Dead board game to the action figures to the video game, it all came from people being really enthusiastic about wanting to be a part of it in some way. The Telltale game is an example of what we want to do with The Walking Dead. It's true to every spirit and tenet this was a story experience first and a game experience second, and they've been quite unapologetic about that. The experience feels less like a game and more like an interactive television series. That's a new kind of art form. People are saying that it's changing video games. It's actually like emotional, and it's something that I think Telltale should be very proud of. The video game's done really well. It's won like, I think, 100 Game of the Year awards. I mean, they won the VGA award. I got to meet uh, Zoe Saldana, which was pretty cool. I mean, by meet her, I took an award out of her hands and I stared at her for about four seconds. But I consider that a meeting. I think she'll remember me if I ever see her again. The art of telling a comic book story is so unique and unlike anything else. You get to see the written word and you see the pictures. That combo is unique to comics. They are a visual medium like movies and TV, but they are unlimited in terms of the imagination like novels. It's the only visual medium where the pace of the story is kind of dictated by the reader. It's that power that I think makes comics such a strange, new, and unique medium that I think is really exciting. You can tell a story through the gaps in the images. So much can be assumed. With comics, it is very individualistic. You have an unlimited budget, basically. You can draw whatever the hell you want to draw. It doesn't matter. I think, I think that's the magic. You could go in and do the biggest epic of your life, or you could do a small, intimate human drama. The possibilities are, you know, to coin a cliche, are indeed endless.
It's actually very hard to imagine a time in the foreseeable future when there isn't The Walking Dead. Certainly right now, it is kind of a cultural phenomenon. The Nerds One, one of the most popular soap operas on television, is about zombies. It is still growing, and it is still a huge thing. The future is wide open. There's a lot of freedom to keep it moving. This world is as rich as our world, and there's, there's an infinite number of stories to tell. So I don't want the zombies ever to go away. As long as the story keeps going, I think there's always going to be people drawn to it. I feel like I've grown more passionate over the 10 years. I have such a cool foundation. I've got 10 years of history to build on. I do very much feel like I'm just getting started and the best is yet to come. And I definitely would like to be here 10 years from now, still doing the book, still having fun with it. After 100 issues, I think Robert and Charlie are capable of doing another 100 or another 200. I'd love to go 300 issues. I'd love to go 400 issues. God would be old men. I'll be nearing retirement. We might be winding out. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't inspired by it, I wouldn't be doing it. I'm hoping that if it one day ends, people will continue to discover it, continue to read it, and that it'll have longevity. I really do appreciate from the bottom of my heart the fact that I am able to continue telling this story, and it really has improved my life in ways that I won't go into because I'll start crying. It is a very great thing, and I do appreciate it all. It's off? Yeah, it's off, it's off. Okay, fine. So not rolling. Yeah, if I find out this thing's on later, I'm gonna be really pissed off. No, it's not. Okay, look. So the end of The Walking Dead is not gonna happen for years and years and years, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, 